Hey, it's Doodlebug back again. Today we're going to be talking about this little Pilot Kakuno. This has been on my list of pens to get, but I ended up getting it because of an extremely random act of kindness from one of the viewers. going to talk about that in a second. I want to get it because it's a great entry pen. I'm going to show the case this as well. I think there's a great pen if you're going to start off in fountain pens. Actually, I've gifted one to someone, but I haven't owned one myself. But I got this one in particular because it has a clear section. Now, what's so special about that? Well, recently I did a little st internal stress analysis on the Twisby Echo, the Twisby Eco, by doing something called photoelasticity, setting up some gear so you can see that. And I thought, wait a second, the Kakuno has a very similar shaped section and the focus on my camera is terrible. And uh, I'm hoping we can get some more information as to internal stresses on this Pilot Kakuno versus the Eco, just to see as a new data point to see if we can notice anything. But I'm going to go through this pen on its own and come back to that test later. I'll tell you it's a great little writer. I definitely recommend this to someone getting starting. So I thought let's do a review and get that out of the way and show you what it's all about. So I got a great little message on Instagram from one of the viewers who goes by PN Westy, which stands for Pacific Northwesty. He lives up here, Pacific Northwest down in the States and uh, was coming up to Vancouver on a little vacay and did the nicest thing ever, said, hey, I love your channel. He stopped by the Vancouver pen shop and left a gift card for me to go get some, some stuff because he loves my videos. And I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's absolutely amazing that someone's so generous to do something like that. And uh, yeah, I was blown away. So I went in. This is one of the pens I was thinking of getting. And they have them there. They have a good price. So I picked one up. I also got this beautiful Claire Fontaine book. And then I uh, checked out the discount bin on inks. I got some ink samples, all that stuff. So I'm going to be showing that other stuff on the channel as well. But I used this beautiful Claire Fontaine book. I was... Uh, yeah, practicing some nice writing with my pens a little bit and just, you know, getting the flow going one afternoon. And uh, yeah, this has been a great book. So you're going to see this around a lot too. This photographs well. I took some pictures of this with my uh, vintage Aurora 88. And that gold with that pen, uh, it just looked really sharp. So uh, yeah, great book. You know, let's uh, I'll give you the details. You can check that out on there as well if you're looking at something like this. But yeah, Claire Fontaine makes some beautiful books. Didn't want to get just another Rodeo one, so it sits nice and flat as well. But we'll see that book more. Let's get back to the pen. And again, a big thank you to our friend Pacific Northwesty. Pilot Kakuno, great starter pen. Uh, Pilot, again, phenomenal brand. I think this is, if I were to pick, you know, which is the best fountain pen brand, that's a tricky one. But Pilot's going to be in that conversation, absolutely, because from starting off with like the Pilot Varsity all the way up to their, you know, you can get a Rushi pens, all that type of stuff. They have separate kind of lines for that. They deliver some great products. So I picked out not this one, a different colored one for a friend of mine who uh, I want to gift a fountain pen. And he it hasn't missed on him once. He says the thing just works perfectly. So we're going to go through this pen nothing uh, crazy as far as features but we'll get you some details on it i have i dipped it in one of the inks to try out this was uh, faber castell stone gray i want to try that as well got a little sample you can see that too we're gonna have some fun with this one i'm gonna do the review and uh go through that and then we're gonna put it under the homemade polariscope and check the two pins side by side to see if we can learn a little bit more about internal stresses in these plastics. I mean, it says it right on the back of the box, simply the best choice for your first fountain pen. And I got to agree, this it is an excellent choice for your very first one as well. Very simple for beginners, nothing too crazy going on. Just comes straight up with cartridges, no converters, because that might be kind of confusing bottles, all that stuff. So, you know, has a cartridge uh, included with it as well, obviously in black. And it's got your basic instructions. You just slap in a cartridge and uh, away you go. It's got all the details on there for you too. Actually, that, that's the one I was planning on getting. But um, because of the recent developments of this test, I wanted to go with a clear section. But yeah, you can just put the cartridge in and you will watch the ink fill up in the feed. So if you're unsure what's going on, well, yeah, if there's no ink in here, it's not going to write. So you can, it's very easy to diagnose if there's a problem with your pen. Is there ink in there? No? Okay, put ink in there. It'll now write. And it's very dependable, built very well for this price point. So I'm going to give you some weights and measurements, size comparisons, do a writing sample, and uh, then we'll have some fun. The pen on its own, it's fairly lightweight. Yeah, 11 and a half grams. 
just the pen body itself seven and three quarters let's get you some overall dimensions the pen like this with the cap on the full length is 131 millimeters pop the cap off you're left with 127 millimeters post it 160.5 and then as far as diameters this is a hexagonal pen you can see six sides the flat to flat on the cap here is uh, about 13.9 millimeters on the body same thing 12 millimeters and then on the grip uh, you can see it's got a bit of a interesting grip profile the uh, section profile i should say sort of triangular as well very interesting shape um, again flat to flat on that like sort of a widest part is 10.8 millimeters very comfortable in the hand no issues with step downs anything at all this could be good for a kid or a full-grown adult here with a pretty large hand it fits in there no matter no matter what hand size you got I don't need to describe it to you. You can see the overall shape of the pen. We do have a little tang here on the top that helps act, I guess, as an extra roll stop. Um, yeah, it's already sort of that way because of a hexagonal nature, but that just has an extra little final stop. It's going to rest on that if you need to. Um, the cap here, you can see you got this little, I don't know, it looks like hips kind of thing, right? A little bit of a curve going in. Well, that's perfect for one-handed operation. Just gives your your thumb a spot to rest on and your finger to pinch and you can just pop that cap on if it's a it's a snap cap so it pops on and off really easy one-handed operation so that you know it looks nice with the pen instead of it just being all the same that would be kind of boring so they have that in there but it's also very simple but very functional as well at the end here you can see a couple holes and you can see the they don't tidy it up but that's the the gate there from the injection molding same thing on the back you can hear it says Japan and Pilot, same thing on there as well. Pop it open and uh, pop off the main body to get into the section. You have a clear. Now again, this is where the materials is gonna be a little bit tricky because there's a lot of confusion. I guess I should also say conflation when it comes to plastics. So on the sites, this will say it is a resin. It's a resin pen. Well acrylic is a resin acrylic resin so anytime you uh injection mold it is a <laughs> thermoplastic resin uh, but there's lots of different ones right so it there's a lot of uh you know kind of mishmashing of terms it, not that you have to be hyper specific it doesn't really matter for the end user you, you get a pen it's plastic it works well i don't you don't really care what the material is and the most people don't think about that but i do because I was trying to ensure I have the exact same resin, this case being an acrylic resin for both pens. I think it is. We'll put it under the Polariscope later and see what we get. You can see here, you got the little pilot nib with a winking smiley face. How cool is that? This is in fine. Um, I can't remember all the nib point sizes, but I know you can get medium for sure. Um, it's The medium is definitely a little bit smoother. I would say if you're first getting into fountain pens, I'd probably recommend the medium, but it all depends. If you do small detail work, math, equations, or whatever, or just have very small writing, uh, the fine will definitely do the job. And it's still very smooth as well, but the medium is a little bit more smooth if you're looking more for, you know, more like journaling and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to getting ink in the pen, the reason why this is a great sort of starter pen is it's just easier to start with cartridges when you get started. You don't have to worry about buying all these different inks and how you fill it, all that type of stuff. You can just put cartridges in. The pilot cartridges hold a, a fairly substantial amount of ink, and especially on a fine point uh, pen like we got here in the Kakuno, it's going to last quite some time. They make their own ink. They're good inks, uh, and you, they got enough colors you can choose from to get yourself started. And you could just call it a day there, but you can go a step further, and if you really want to explore inks, they got you covered as well. So one thing you can do is you can save the cartridges when they're done instead of just disposing of them and chucking them in the garbage, all that kind of stuff. I believe they're actually recyclable. Um, so you can actually recycle it, which is which is nice. But if you get up some type of filling mechanism, a pipe it or some of these fancy ones like I got here as well, you can take ink from a bottle, fill it into the cartridge and uh, away you go. So you can either just stick with pilot ink or now go into any ink that you want to. If you don't like the idea of that, you can get yourself a converter. So here I have my Pilot Prera and very similar type of setup as far as nib and feed and everything else. A little more premium pen and materials and all that stuff as well. But on here, you have the converter 
the standard converter you would go for would be what's called a con 40 the pilot con 40 it, it does get a little backlash this one just because the it doesn't fill as much as the more the international standards one but the converter itself works quite well and you're not going to have any flow issues because they do have a unique feed design on pilot to help really uh, improve the ink and air exchange. There are also other converters. I have it on this one, my other pilot pen. This is the 912. This takes a Con 70, and I haven't tried it myself, but I am kind of curious. I wonder if I can fit the Con 70 on the Kakuno. I'm going to pull the converter out in a moment, but I figured since I already have the pen inked up and I wanted to try out this uh, stone gray, let's just do the writing sample, then I'll come back, test out the converter when I clean the pen out. quick look at the writing sample on the Pilot Kakuno. Again, like I said, this is a fine. So it uh, it works really well, whether you're doing some tight printing, the wetness is good on there too, got no complaints there. Or if you're, you know, you're writing fast, doing some cursive, just you got very fast writing. It has not skipped at all. The reverse was pretty much a no-go. But uh, yeah, if you push really hard, this is not flexible, just don't push hard. It just makes the line a little bit wetter, a tad more wide, but don't use it for any type of high pressure. It's not a flex pen. Small printing works fantastic. So if you're doing small notes or formulas or whatever it is you're writing, uh, you know, especially for students, this would be perfect. Larger looper, loopier kind of writing. Yep, I would prefer personally a, a, you know, a different nib style for that type of writing, but it still pulls off the job no matter what. And just as a comparison, my Pilot Pereira has a medium nib in it, so I thought I would show you the nib point difference. So if you're debating between the two, don't know if that helps you, the best thing to do is always try one in person. But uh, if you like it a little bit smoother, I would go with the medium over the fine. But the fine is plenty smooth, but a little bit better. I would, you know, if I was going to do this for uh, note taking, more kind of nice journaling writing, I would probably go with the medium nib. But either way, works well and absolutely flawless. Normally I don't show this, but I thought in case you're brand new to fountain pens and this is your first pen, you want to know how you clean it. So you take the pen body off, pull out the cartridge or converter, whatever you have, just pop it off. And then what you could do is just run this under the faucet, get the water to go down in there. Now it won't totally get all the ink out, but if you have one of these around the house for like a bulb flush for doing ears or whatever it is, if you got one, this is a real slick trick. You just put it in there, it's full of water, and then you just blast it all out. And in one flush, you can see that water is clear. We got all the ink out. So that is probably the quickest way to flush out uh, really any fountain pen. If it's a cartridge converter style, you can do that. If you don't have one, um, you know, you can just put it under the water and you can put your lips around this and just blow the water out into like say a little tissue and just do that a few times and that'll get it really clean as well. I'm gonna pop this Con 70 on here really quick. It will fit on the feed. Okay, there's ink in it. So I'm gonna have to clean it again. You can just see how quickly the ink goes down into the feed, gonna prime up the nib soon, but let's see if you can fit the pen body on. It looks like you might be able to. Oh, look at that, that's quite nice. It actually adds a little more weight to the pen too, so I like that. If you are gonna put a converter on this pen, um, you know, the Con 40 is okay, but the Con 70, is much better, holds a lot more ink, and it's just a nicer unit, I would say, for sure. So um, if you can spend a few more dollars, or if you have it from a different pen or something like that, you can fit a Con 40. There's also the 50, you don't really see that much, but the Con 70 is a little bit better converter. You can pop that on there too. It's flushed out again now. That's clean enough. You can maybe get a little tissue, put it down there, get the rest of the water out, put it around the nib, let the capillary action kind of suck the, the remaining water out. That would be good enough. You can blow in the end. But if you really want to get the super duper clean or get all the water out, you can pull out the nib and feed. Now, under regular usage, I don't recommend doing that. This is good enough because it is a, a, a pressure fit. So, you know, you could potentially wear this part out, add more internal stresses into it and potentially have a cracking issue one day. But if you wanted to take it out, 
that's all you do little pressure on it and pull it out here are your parts these are the same that are in say a pilot metropolitan also in the pilot Pereira, which also means you can swap out uh, nib units between pens and the focus is having one hell of a time trying to show you that but you can see the exact same bits nibs and feeds are identical as well so if you have a different writing need and you've got the nib and a different pen or whatever you want to switch things up you can do that too Another really great feature on this pen is the cap. Not because uh, visually it's stunning, it's okay, it does the job, but inside you have a nice little cap liner. So when you go to put the pen in, it is sealing against the end of the section here and performs a nice seal on the pen so it's not gonna dry out. So really for this price point, the pen has kind of everything. It's, you know, it's not a sophisticated looking pen, but it's got lots of color options. You got the nib options that most people need and you can do it on cartridges you got a few converter options as well it's very reasonably priced it's a premium manufacturer making it you know an entry-level pen and you got the swappability across the whole line of pens as well so i'll put this back in the pen so any new folks can see how it goes you got these little flaps here on the side you have a little sort of ridge flat spot there on the feed it just goes in and tells you exactly where to go again attention to detail because if you're a newbie or just, you know, really anyone knowing is that nib and feed, are they in the right spot? They got you squared away there, and then you just slip it back into the pen, any orientation, and you're done. Now the fun stuff begins. So a couple of things. That was cool. We got to double check the Con 70 on there as well. Um, I want to do a stress map on this pen to see how are we looking in comparison to the Twisby Eco. So let me get this set up. Got the white screen polarized light source to go. I'm going to put my polarized sunglasses on top to do the trick but look at this we got some defects we got some little bubbles in the section so this might be a treat i'm curious to see how this shows up there might i don't know if that's a seam or potentially already a little micro crack or something in there as well or just a defect but look at that so this is going to be quite neat here is the section from the Pilot Kakuno. So you can see there's uh, quite a few more internal stresses that we see, especially compared to here we go. We got the Twisby uh, Eco pen. So very, very clean, almost no stress lines. Like I said, if you haven't seen the video before, you can check it out. And uh, we just found a couple little points on the Eco right at the end here where there seemed to be a sort of an inflection point uh, increase in internal stresses. And this is where people are claiming uh, cracks happen when they do happen. I haven't really heard of that at all with the Kakuno. So it's very interesting, you know, you can see this and think, oh, this this should probably crack more, but you haven't heard of that. So again, it, uh, I don't know if it's a red herring, but it, it does seem to happen on the Inc. Eco, but you don't hear about it happening on the Kakuno. So what's the deal? I don't know. Also, you, you are just going to see a lot more because there's a lot more stuff going on. You can see there's all these features that are inside of the pilot Kakuno section. So the feed slips into there. That tang there goes into the cartridge or converter, depending on what you're using. Um, so there's a lot more features you can see them here as well. Those bubbles, let's see if we can find them. It might be a little tricky with the lighting here, but I, I don't see any little increase in... Uh, stresses i can't i can barely even see the bubbles are not really showing up which is quite interesting i'm sure if i looked off camera here i can see it but if we look at the end of the section i did find this interesting so there's these three little sort of dimples that are part of the mold and if i just look at it from one way you can see underneath those features right there if we can get a decent focus going you can see there's a, a, a concentration right underneath each one of those points which makes sense it's you have a little feature like that it's the stresses are going to build in that region um, so even in this section there's a few little parts like that where there's a little bit of a peak a gathering of internal stresses but from everything i've heard so far i haven't really uh, heard much of cracking going on with a pilot kakuno i'm just going to sort of leave it there for now because i'm not an expert in this field but i thought since these seem like very similar section designs similar type of profiles the neck here at the end, very similar. I, th I think the materials are pretty close to each other, but don't quote me. I thought it'd be worth a look on there as well. But uh, yeah, it's a tricky one with these round objects. The polarized light's coming through. It's getting twisted by the internal stresses. Screensaver's going on. Uh, it comes through again, so it can get skewed even more. And also this one's faceted too. So it's got that kind of triangular grip action going on. So 
I think we're just going to see a lot more just due to the design of the section as well. What are my final thoughts on the Pilot Kakuno? Is this, as they say on the pack, is there simply the best choice for your first fountain pen? I, it's a pretty uh, accurate statement. Is it the absolute best one? I know that's totally uh, debatable, but I think it definitely should be one you check out. You got uh, nib options from extra fine, fine and medium, all sorts of kind of colors that uh, that you can, I'm sure you can all find one uh, that suits your needs as well. The pricing is very attractive. You got the Pilot brand. You got to be hard pressed to find a, a bad Pilot pen. And so this is great for knockabout, for students, all price points, spare pen, travel pen, slip cap, sealing up, all that good stuff. You got cartridges, converters, you can fit a Con 70 in here. So uh, yeah, there's really no, no knocks on the pen. I think this is a good ticket. The whole stress map analysis I did, um, you know, I, that was really just to scratch my own itch. I was curious if I could find something, a glaring difference that stood out to go, aha, that's what's causing this cracking issue people talk about here. I have no idea. I, I, I got nothing to say. <laughs> it really almost maybe made it more confusing than when I first started. So I'm going to come back to that in a separate video at some point. But on its own, the uh, this is a great little pen. So big thanks again to our good friend viewing here, PN Westy Pacific Northwesty. Hope your trip was going great here over in uh, the Vancouver area and on to the Vancouver Island. But uh, that's all I got for now. So thanks again for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't. I got lots more stuff coming up. We'll catch you next time.